not long ago, just a few decades ago, when modern states were emerged or put in place and independences came and so on, uh, the language was different. People seemed to have forgotten about uh, these ways of claiming justice and so on. And modern vocabulary, this is where we come to translation again, modern vocabulary, modern terms, modern ways of expressing the popular aspirations came to prevail. And so it was rather socialism, it was equality, it was fairness, it was, uh, and the, the tools to reach them were those, or the ways to reach them were those which are provided by modern political processes. It's popular participation, it's uh, accountable government, and things like that. But uh, it is surprising to many that the call for implementation of Sharia is gaining so much momentum. And one of the explanations, I'm not fully for it, is that the society is coming back to its own ways of looking thing, at things, as if society was constant, was permanent, was some kind of block which, which has inside itself some some views, some ideals, some ways of looking at things and which brings them back when it sees that things have not worked in different, in other ways. Originally it means the way that is prescribed or recommended by the scriptures. It's the way, it's the path, the right path. Within the sources, within Quran and Sunnah, there are a number of, a small number of commandments and there are general principles. These are the two resources that were available to those early legal experts. And they did their best in their time to derive from them all what was needed for their societies. And societies were happy with that. And it, it did work because it did provide legal frameworks in various parts of the world, across cultures, across languages, and so on. And it enabled those societies to, to put in place uh, an order that worked for them. Since the 19th century, something has happened, something very, a very big change has happened. It's the codification of Sharia. Sharia was the practice of scholars before. It, each scholar had to think about the question and to find their sources and to come up with an interpretation. And they were talking to people, to the masses, who at that time did not have access to the sources. So they played a, a central role in interpreting and in applying for each case what needed to be applied. Since the 19th century, a process has begun in various parts of the Muslim world to write the code as a code to write Sharia as a code, instead of being a framework for thinking about the norms and for designing and for identifying the norms that should govern cases and so on, they, it became a legal code with articles with very detailed prescriptions for this and that. And so there was no more any role for any thinking, for experts thinking or interpreting or so on. You had just to look up in a book what, what kind of rule you should apply in this or that case, and that's it. This is what uh, the big misunderstanding, another one, which is happening. Sharia now understood to be Islamic law, as if it were a system of law that could be opposed to positive modern law, to other systems of law that have come out in other parts of the world. So this is a big change from a framework of, for thinking for a number of of normative approaches to a legal code and this has in a way emptied the Sharia from its uh, potential for helping in thinking about the norms and provided some with a kind of alternative that they think is usable immediately out of the box uh, to, to Islamize society. This is very important because we have, and there is a very fascinating moment in history for me. It's 
thinkers of the, there is a window in early 20th century where a number of individuals without using the tools of modern social sciences, of modern history or uh, the humanities or whatever, who were trained in traditional schools, but who have come uh, to, uh, one of them is Ali Abd al-Razik, who after the abolition of the caliphate here in Turkey, wanted to go back to the most important questions, as the one you raised for us this afternoon. <laughs> so to go back, what is the real understanding or what, what, what the teaching, what is the real teaching of Islam in matters of politics? And wanting not to offer another commentary on what happened or what this said or what that said, but to go to the question itself. So he asked this big question and went to, to the sources and read the sources again and came with conclusions which are at a huge distance from what the very established schools had accepted. So it's a kind of big revolution. And he was not alone. Others was, were doing the same in the subcontinent, in Iran, in Turkey. So it's individuals who spontaneously, if I can say, all asked themselves those big questions and went back to the sources and came with views, with the conclusions, with understanding that is that departs from what prevailed in the scholarly circles for centuries. This is a, for me a big turn and I prefer to call it a new Muslim consciousness. I prefer not Islam here because I prefer to keep the word Islam for the religion. What surprised me is that it was nearly occulted, if I can use this term, in, in uh, academia and in the, by the media. Academia and the media for once converge, they don't converge very often, in being very interested by some thinkers who have been rather conservative or, or fundamentalist or whatever term we choose, those who oppose the West, those who see, they seem to be more exciting, more interesting. So we find so much about them, so much writings, discussions and so on. They are put to the fore as if they were the only thinkers or the main thinkers of the Muslim world, which is not the case. If you go within Muslim societies, you find rather a debate with a spectrum of views, of ideas, and those happen to be on the extreme right of the spectrum. So I think uh, this is why I came to this. I thought that we do need, when we have the ability to speak in European languages, although not always very well, to try to do something to give a more balanced picture, Except, especially that in our conditions, the image is sent back. There is a kind of reflexivity. And in Muslim societies, they are discovering that this or that is made a hero or is is uh, were considered as the the spokesman so it works even within the, it comes back to to muslim societies we need to be cautious here that we are not well offering unbalanced pictures of what is going on <laughs>